We will continue with our nine weeks test review on to page two. Decide whether the table represents a linear or exponential function, then write the function. And so we're looking at the characteristics of the graph. And for number 12, we know that this graph is a reflected growth. If it was turned, not being reflected, it will appear like this. Okay, so it is a reflected growth. To calculate our rate of change over negative 2, 1, let's look at the graph at negative 2. So we start at our origin, go to negative 2, and... When x is negative 2, our y value, and we're looking at where does it hit on that graph. So it hits at negative 2, comma, 0. And when x is also 1, so these become our x value. These are intervals. They're not a coordinate pair. So this is x, and this would be x. So if x is 1, then we come to our graph. And it hits at our graph at 1, comma, negative 7. So we use these two points to calculate our rate of change. M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I were to label these as x1, y1, x2, y2, so that would be 0 minus negative 7 over negative 2 minus 1. That's the same as 0 plus 7 over negative 3. So that would be a negative 7 over 3, which would be my rate of change. Our domain. So we're looking at how, what is the graph doing along the x-axis? Let me erase this so we can go back and see what is the graph doing. So we're looking at these endpoints. So from the x-axis, it will continue to go on and on and on to infinity. So it'd be negative infinity. Is less than x. And if this would continue to go on and on and on, so it will keep going on to our um, positive infinity. So we're looking at what the graph is doing from left to right. When we look at our range, we're looking at the graph um, from top to bottom, or you can say north to south. And we notice that as it going this direction, okay, so we're looking at how far will it go up and down, it will stop here, okay, this would be our asymptote, it's not going past positive 1, but it's going to negative infinity, so we put negative infinity first because it's less than our positive 1. Our x-intercept, where does it cross on the x-axis? And on the x-axis, it crosses here at negative 2, comma, 0. On the y-axis, where does it cross on our y-axis? And here it crosses on the y-axis, which is the y-intercept at 0, comma, negative 3. If I read my graph from left to right, then I know that this is a decreasing graph. Reading from left to right. Our left end behavior is actually is our asymptote, and it goes all the way up to 1. It does not get higher than 1 on the left end. Our right end behavior, it goes down. 
graph is going down. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do some of these. I'm not going to go over all of them because I do not want this video to be extremely long. Um, we know number 13 is a decay because we read it from left to right. So it's going downward. Okay. Um, the rate, which is the base of our equation, and that is one half. The domain, we're looking at how far this graph would go to the left, how far will it go to the right. So it'd be negative infinity, comma to x, and it's going all the way to positive infinity. When we look at a range, we're looking at how far is it going up and how far it goes down. It goes down to negative 3. And it keeps going up and up and up. So it'd be negative 3 is less than y, which is less than positive infinity. We look at where it crosses our x and y axis. It crosses the x axis. And I'm going to go back and erase some of this so that we can see exactly. It's crossing the y-axis at approximately I just lost my lost my Okay, it's crossing the um, the x axis, not quite at negative one, so we can say at least about one half or negative zero and five tenths and zero. It crosses the x axis at negative five comma zero, and it crosses the y axis at zero comma negative one. And these are written as an ordered pair. We know it is a decreasing because we read it from left to right. Our end behavior is going upward. And our right end behavior is not going downward because it starts curving at the asymptote, which is negative 3. Okay. Number 14, you can draw a picture to do number 14. That will help you get a better understanding of the graph. But if you look at this graph, if my x values go from negative 3 to a positive 3, then it's going up. It is increasing. When I look at my y value, it starts out at 2.04 to 2.11, all the way down to 29. So it is also increasing. So we know this is a growth. Our rate of change, if x is negative 2 and x is 1. So these are the points that we would use to identify our rate of change over interval negative 2 and 1. So we use these two points. So you use those two points to calculate your rate of change. And remember, we calculate that rate of change same as slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our domain, we will know it will continue to go from negative infinity, which is less than x, to positive infinity. Our, our range, it goes from 2 to less than y, which is less than positive infinity. Okay. Um, the x-intercept, when we know the x-intercept is when we look at, well, let's go to the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always zero and some number. So the x will be zero and the y value. So when x is equal to zero, then we know we're at the y-intercept, y and some number. So in this case, it's 0, 3. That's our y-intercept. On the flip side, the x-intercept will have some number, comma, 
um, it'll be some um, some number comma zero. The y would be equal to zero. But in this in this particular table, we do not have a y value of zero, so there is none for the y intercept. It is growth, so it is increasing. Our end behavior, so if you were to draw this graph, the end behavior would start um, curving at your asymptote of 2. And your right end behavior would start going up. So this is the end of page 2 of your test report.